So would you please welcome our two speakers today, Professor Patrick McGorry and Nicole Juniper. Today, Nicole and I are here to give a voice to the four million Australians experiencing mental illness and their families and their friends. We are everywhere, in every school, in every workplace, in every community, from Penrith to Perth, from Toowoomba to Toorak, and in every electorate, even, even every marginal seat. We're everywhere and we vote. So it's great to have this opportunity in this election campaign to, to, and I'm very grateful to the Press Club to, for allowing us to do this, to get mental health on the agenda. It hasn't been on the agenda yet. That's why we have this title, Miss, Missing in Action. Now, people are dying every day in many different ways due to mental illness and millions of Australian lives are being diminished. Our country is seriously weakened by this. Suicide rates have become a king tide. 2,864 people compared to 1,153 dying on the roads. I think even more possibly shocking statistic is that people with mental illness die 20 years younger than the rest of us from preventable medical illnesses, not just from suicide. So 12,000 excess deaths a year. The average age of death in our part of Melbourne for people with serious mental illness is 48 years. That's worse situation than we see in Indigenous health. Now, because we diagnose these physical illnesses early and ensure scientifically based care is consistently available for, for everyone affected for as long as they need it, the death rates from medical diseases are actually falling. We don't shortchange people with physical illnesses. We don't block access with triage and technology solutions. And there's no 10 session rule for people with physical illness. So we do want to hear from all of our political leaders about this in the, in the next three or four weeks. How can an issue that affects everyone weakens the economy, the economy is the issue apparently, weakens the economy and it's the best value for money across the whole of the healthcare system. That's what the World Economic Forum tells us, OECD. And one where Australian science and innovation has brought dramatic progress within reach and one that's been at the absolute forefront of public discourse and election commitments at every single election over the last decade. How could it have disappeared from view? If we begin to believe that the only barrier to good mental health is our personal understanding, then we let policymakers off the hook. So the problem is not awareness, but a lack of awareness that until it's too late that services are hard to access and of dubious quality. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that story from distressed parents and, and uh, people generally. I didn't realise what the situation was until it happened to me and I couldn't get the help I needed. Even Mental Health Australia, who are here today, thank you for coming. Um, they've been battered, I think, into lowering their sights to minimising cuts. How do we get to that situation? It wasn't an approach adopted by the AMA, the GPs and the radiologists. I'm sure everyone agrees that if the Prime Minister, whoever it happens to be, gets behind an issue, then, then it really gets momentum. We see that at state level. Premiers, when Premiers back mental health, we get progress. When it's left to the Health Minister, nothing much happens. Everyone's obsessed with the economy, probably quite rightly. But the annual well-being cost of mental illnesses in Australia was estimated yesterday as 200 billion. Now, even if that figure, even if that figure is only half of that, that is a massive number. It's 12 per cent of the of the annual output of the economy. So, if we improve mental health care by 10 per cent, we'd save billions. We can do that. We can definitely improve mental health care by at least 10 per cent, maybe 20 per cent. Because mental illness strikes in emerging adulthood, this is why we had such a massive focus on young people, which has been great for, on both sides of politics for the last 10 years, and it affects people in the prime productive years of life. That's not what cancer does. That's not what heart disease does. But mental, mental illness saps the, the heart of the economy across those decades. It delivers a body blow to millions of Australian families and our economy. The Prime Minister gave us a commitment, a very welcome commitment, to leave no stone unturned. And under this stone are some personal stories. Preventable death. Mark became depressed in his late 20s while working in the US. Although he was severely depressed and unable to work, even unable to get out of bed some days, his parents were not consulted or engaged in his care by the GP, who totally failed to review the treatment in the coming weeks, didn't see him again. Psychologist turned out to be someone with a more limited educational background, not a clinical psychologist. Four weeks later, Mark's mother came home from work to find her son hanging in the garage, dead at 28 from a highly treatable illness that had not been taken seriously. This pattern is repeated, as you know, all over Australia several times every day in primary care and, and the limited specialist care that's available. Eight preventable deaths every single day of the year. Mental health services are overwhelmed. The mentally ill can get little access except to emergency departments 
where they really are not welcome a lot of the time. <clears throat> and you can understand why. They're not designed for looking after people with, with mental illness. They're designed for car accidents and heart attacks. So it's, it's not to blame the staff. The death toll is rising. Our own service in Melbourne, we cover this massive area of Melbourne with huge growth corridors. The population's gone up by 50% in the last 10 years. We used to have maybe one death from suicide a year in our service. A couple of years ago, we had eight. So just to recap, we are everywhere. We are everywhere in Australia. Every electorate, every marginal seat. And I want to appeal to everyone affected directly or indirectly by mental illness to expect a real plan. Don't get sold short this time. Don't, it's, we haven't been sold short in the last 10 years. We've been making progress. Don't be fobbed off. Don't accept. Don't be shortchanged. And use your voice and your vote. Thanks very much.